Hello! Quite often I get asked, how easy is it to make bone broth? So as I'm about to whip up a batch, I thought I'd show you how. First of all, let's go through the ingredients. It's absolutely essential that you get good beef bones. These are beef marrow bones, about two to two and a half kgs. I also purchased a pig's foot pork trotter. And then I got some extra marrow and cartilage type meat to add. These are oxtail, about one to one and a half kg is what you should need. Once you've put those into the pot, you're then going to add two to four carrots, one onion, two bay leaves, a tablespoon of black peppercorns, two whole cloves, about two to three stalks of celery with the uh, leaves, and then we have a quarter to half a cup of apple cider vinegar. What I prefer to use to cook my bone broth is a slow cooker, but you can also cook your bone broth on the stove in a very large pot over a low heat. So what I've done is I've added all the ingredients into the pot. As you can see, all the vegetables, the bone marrow, the oxtail, and the pig's trotter. After you've finished adding the spices, you then just add fresh filtered water until it covers the top. I think that will have to do because it's pretty close to the top of the pot. Then all you need to do is put the lid on and cook. So once you have the lid on, and if you're using a slow cooker, making sure you have the vent turned to the right position, you want to turn the timer on. Mine's only going to allow for six hours at a time, but this will need to be cooked for 12. So when it's gone from that six hours, I will then come back and put it on for another six hours. So why do I love bone broth so much? It's because it's full of macro and trace minerals, amino acids like glycine, glutamine and proline. Plus it's loaded with collagen to help heal your gut strengthen your bones, and skyrocket your energy. So it's absolutely fantastic to get into your daily diet. You can add it to soups instead of stock. You can have it on its own in a cup. You can even add it to your smoothies. So go ahead, give it a go, and you'll be amazed at some of the results that you find. Hi, so welcome back to making bone broth. So the 12 hours have now passed and we're about to extract the bone broth out of the pot. Here goes. Mmm, look at all that goodness. So what I'm gonna do now is just take out all the bones and all the vegetables. Um, you'll be able to utilize some of the other meats that you've put in there if you used short rib or oxtail and the rest is able to be discarded. So let me just go ahead and do that. So what we're left with now is just the bone broth. This is after all the bones and vegetables have been taken out and there's one last step to do before you are to leave it to cool um, before putting into the refrigerator and that is just to give it a quick strain so that you can get rid of the peppercorns or any of the last pieces that are floating around. So let me just do that right now. So here's the strained bone broth. I like to put it in a couple of large containers so that it can get a chance to cool down. You are wanting to leave it to cool for about an hour before you place it into the refrigerator and then you're going to leave it um, until it's actually cool and becomes a gel-like substance. 
So if you've done your bone broth correctly, it's going to be jelly-like and it'll wobble. And then you know that it's full of really good collagen. If you look closely, you can just see that there's bits of kind of fat and collagen now. And when it's fully cooled, it'll actually form all the fat on the top, all the fat will come to the top, which you basically will just scrape off before you um, use or reheat. So those are ready to be cooling for an hour, and then they will just simply just go into the fridge.